Okay, I see people entering the workshop. Welcome. Nice to see some familiar faces. And hello to everyone joining us in the workshop. We're getting ready, getting everybody join the room before we get started. Maybe those of you who already entered um, can make yourselves comfortable for the next hour. And while you're doing so, please log in to menti.com on your smartphone or your PC. Um, and you can use the code mentioned here on the screen, 774219, to log in, because you will uh, need the menti.com um, app to take part of the workshop. So please try to log in and get yourselves ready to start this workshop. If you're finding any troubles love logging in, please uh, let us know in the chat so that Yuri can uh, help you get logged in. Okay, somebody already got into Mentimeter, but please, all the others joining the workshop, uh, try to log in and um, feel free to answer the first question if you're ready to contribute to change, because that's what this workshop is all about. Welcome, those of you joining. Please try to get ready to join the menti.com app and participate at this workshop. That will make it more interactive and interesting for you. We should have by now um, nine people entered the mentimeter.com. I'm just going to leave you all some time to uh, get logged in uh, before we start. And then we try to take off and uh, work through this workshop together. Everyone should feel free to um, put on his um, camera. That's always nice to see each other, to make it more vivid as if we're in the same room. Um, we know this is a slightly different format of the workshop. Um, it would be different being in the same room and sharing this experience, but I'm sure we'll make the best of it um, through this way. At least I'm gonna try so. I'm more the analog people, a uh, person, but um, we're, we'll get there, I'm sure. So I see five people entered the menti.com and are ready to contribute to change. So let's take off. Some people might join us a little later. That's no problem. Uh, they'll hop in and uh, join us. Today, Yuri and I um, would like to welcome you to this workshop in which we will explore our shared interests and abilities to progress towards a person-to-person -person society. My name is Pim, I'm a drama therapist, and since 22 years now, I work in welfare and uh, mental health care. Um, besides that, I'm also co-director of the Quality of Life World Foundation, 
together with my partner in crime, Yuri, who you see here, he's the technical brain behind the new uh, model. Yuri is operational director of the Quality of Life World Foundation, and he spent his career as an entrepreneur in uh, IT. So that's a combo of hosts you have today in this workshop. So we want to take you on a journey from what is to what if, like Rob Hopkins would say, and we'll do this testing your stance in some polls, giving some context of the person-to-person -person society, and we'll work through an exercise together with you to see how we can make this happen. Um, it's a different context, I know, and uh, I'm sure we'll make the best of it. Uh, most of all, we hope to inspire you. But before we dive deeper into this workshop together, I would like to get a taste of what your expectations are of this workshop, because knowing what someone expects helps us to bring the best um, to you. So can you type in Mentimeter what you would like to get out of this workshop? To learn more about real life uses cases of the person-to-person -person society. Okay. What else would you like to learn? To get some more knowledge. Okay. I'm sure there are more expectations. Please feel free to fill in strategies for how we can progress towards that person-to-person -person society. Yes to connect, very important, with fellows who believe in a person-to-person -person society, to know similar spirits, and this one I can see, to more, learn more, hear about strategies on how to tackle the challenge, what a person-to-person -person society means, lots of differing opinions and chaotic structures, okay? I'm sure um, we'll get into some of those topics and expectations, and um, I hope we live up to it. So progress, innovation, change, those are all common needs for many of us today. More and more people question the current evolution of our world, and many of us are eager to debate and build innovative solutions. So there's a great deal of creativity and an entrepreneurial spirits amongst us. That's proven today when I see all those people joining the Radical Exchange Conference. So if we want to change this current environment, making it a better world in which we get connected, empower each other, reinforce society, learn from each other, then the time has come to get rid of the box and bring to life completely new social models. And that's why we come with our proposal to build a person-to-person -person society built around humanity, a sustainable economy, and respect for Mother Nature's resources. So in a nutshell, it's a world that's built on evolutionary operating system to actively and sustainably build quality of life for all of us. It's a system built on iteration where trial and error will enable growth and it finds its roots in a compass representing the values of the ecosystem. And it's set in motion solely by human action and interaction. So that's why you are here. Therefore, reinforcing society starts with ourselves as people are able to move mountains when things really matter to them. If we start from a good quality of life for everyone, we might be able to set that positive movement in motion. After all, who doesn't consider it important to feel good, experience safety, feel connected with others, live a dignified life, feel respected, experience meaning and self-realization, and live that meaningful life that we all want to live. So imagine that type of society. Really try to visualize it. What would that type of society look, to, look like to you? So that's our next question. What does a person-to-person -person society look like to you? So you can indicate how you see a person-to-person -person society. In this Mentimeter question, what would there be different in that society? Um, what would this kind of society contain? How would you like it to be? What would there be present in this society? Because it's effective, 
because you appreciate it or it's valuable, but also what would you like to avoid in that society and get rid of because it's interfering or ineffective. So feel free to enter some things, giving chances, no institutions. It would be a transparent system, I see. People would be accountable. Freedom would be a very important aspect. It would be cashless. Okay, interesting. Okay, so now we know a bit of what a person-to-person -person society looks like to you. Crowd wisdom, really, really very important. Together we know more. Economic democracy. Good power allocation. Abundance. Yes, all beautiful aspects of a person-to-person -person society. So now we know what a person-to-person -person society could look like. Then we need to figure out how to get there. To set a movement in motion, we need energy. And energy we normally get from things that drive us and motivate us. So if we look at building motivation and energy to set this movement in motion, then we need to consider two things as human motivation comes in two varieties. One form is our motivation to have more of what we want. That's moving towards what matters to us. The other form is to have less of what we don't want. That's moving away from the pains of our society. In general, people whose lives are spent moving towards what matters are much happier than people whose lives are spent trying to move away from unpleasant experience or try to avoid them or control them. So in order for you to participate and bring your energy in this workshop, it might be helpful if you check your own purpose in participating here today. Maybe it even relates and aligns with our purpose. Yuri and I want to encourage people to increase their quality of life by expanding their ability to adapt and self-manage in the face of life challenges, whether they are emotional, social, physical, intellectual, or economic. So improving quality of life has been the driving force of humanity for ages, and it can help us again to tackle the challenges we face today. That's why we see it as our main purpose. So what matters to you about being part of this workshop? Why are you interested in progressing towards a person-to-person -to -person society? What do you value about that? Again, we would like to you to fill in some keywords of your values or intents that energize you to contribute to change and progress towards a person-to-person -to -person society. It's important to become aware and build motivation. Building motivation, motivation and energy asks you to become aware of what matters to you about being part of this workshop. At the same time, you might also connect with your feelings and thoughts that shows up and get in the way of moving towards what matters. That's normal. But for now, try to fill in what truly matters to you about progressing towards a person-to-person -person society. Egality, compassion, become more tolerant, collective prosperity, effective altruism, humanitarianism, wow, difficult words, <laughs> altruism, being active, connected with each other, compassion, doing something, being able to have an impact, yes, strong motivations, cool, that will help us to tackle issues when we face them, and it will keep us in the right track towards a person-to-person -to -person society. But progress doesn't happen on its own. I'm sorry, it requires actions. We can't just look at institutions and rely on them to facilitate this transition, as they have no incentive to do so. People are the only ones who can accelerate the transition into this new societal model. So change requires active participation, taking action, using your talents and skills to contribute and have a positive impact. That means that we as individuals have the ability to bring about active change. Now, do we? 
How do you think about this statement that you as an individual have the ability to bring about societal change? Again, we would like you to ask to fill in the question on Mentimeter, whether you believe in your ability as an individual to contribute to change and make it happen. Okay. I see people agreeing. I see people doubting, but all of you at least are willing to give, in, give it a try. And that's important. It's like Margaret Mead said once, she said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world because it's the only thing that ever has. So let that be an encouragement to you all. Transitioning to that person-to-person -person society requires a huge rethinking of our current models. Problems that are now left over to institutions to handle become everyone's duty. Fortunately, we do not have to design the system up front as the ecosystem is built from the ground up on evolutionary principles and it's driven by human collaboration. People have a personality, abilities and skills and when it, given a supportive environment, they will be able to exchange their knowledge and experience and increase their skills and knowledge on different levels and topics. This also means that people need sufficient opportunities and the authority to self-govern to make an impact on their eight life domains. They have to be able to manage their own affairs, to be able to make decisions when it comes to organizing their life. Interdependence, interdependence comes with responsibility and at the same time it strengthens people. This doesn't mean that people should act on their own, there's nothing wrong with asking for or giving support, encouraging people and giving them sufficient opportunities to try things themselves and experience their ability to act and impact will truly help them grow and progress. True frictionless person-to-person -person collaboration will induce a constant flux and it requires a system that is able to constantly adapt. Evolutionary theory is at the basis of every single component of the ecosystem. It makes sure people can choose the best strategy to move forward and act on it by implementing it in the real world. At the same time, it's necessary to stay open and aware to perceive the tensions arising. It takes willingness to reflect in order to reinforce what works and adapt what doesn't work. And this cycle will repeat indefinitely. In a person-to-person -person society, the concept of organization is fundamentally altered. Every person or group of people wanting to make an impact, aligning on a set of beliefs, setting goals and enacting their purpose, we call them initiatives. And there can be as many forms of initiatives as there are types of people. As an initiative is created with an intentional group of people and dismantled if the group is dissolved. Initiatives are the manifestation of people collaborating and they are the drivers of the person-to-person -person society. The output of any initiative can be either and preferably both economic added value, which we call equal, and quality of life added value, which we call qual. The balanced relation between both is essential to the operation of the ecosystem. So if we agree on the fact that each of us as an individual has an impact, it still leaves us with the question how to organize ourselves in order to progress towards that person-to-person -person society. Do we need institutions to organize and regulate and facilitate human collaboration? And that's our next question to you participants. How do you feel about it? Do you think we need institu institutions to organize and regulate and facilitate human collaboration? Please feel free to enter your answer in the Mentimeter. Okay, so I see there are a lot of people agreeing on the fact that we need institutions. Let's see if we can change your mind and help you see the true power of people collaborating. There are other ways to organize ourselves. 
striving for a person-to-person -person society is embracing human nature and trusting people with the process of collaboration instead of adding an institutional layer on top of every single interaction. In that sense, the goal of the quality of life world is not to create a new institutional layer, but rather to shape an ecosystem with the right ingredients to catalyze and support person-to-person -person collaboration. The quality of life world operating system does that by abstracting the requirements for operational, legal and financial representation as those are the ones tethering us to, hold, to the old paradigm. So the ecosystem is framed around the following ideas. We think there is no need for national borders. Boundaries to collaboration are fluent and defined at the fringe of the intergroup relationship. In that sense, the person-to-person -person society is global. In order to avoid centralization of power, people have to be their own managers and fully assume responsibility for the functioning of their role within their groups. And ensuring each group works autonomously makes the person-to-person -person society distributed. In order to make it action-oriented, people take responsibilities and accountabilities out of free will. As we know, individual motivation is, is and will always be the main engine of collaboration. That's very important. And as we break down the barriers holding back seamless collaboration, the environment will be in a constant flux as groups are formed and dissolved. All structures created in support of the actions of a group will dissolve when they are no longer needed making the structure of the person-to-person -person society dynamic and evolutionary as well. Every action we take originates in our beliefs and our values. We win in collaboration with others, not at the expense of others. And as individual and collective goals are aligned, there is only gain in sharing information and knowledge. The person-to-person -person society is therefore transparent and private by default. The basic principles of ownership as they are known today are disassembled and reassembled into a new paradigm called universal ownership. In the person-to-person -person society, ownership represents value, but it gives no intrinsic usage rights. Usage rights are defined by and are the consequence of active participation. So if we are the ones having to do all the work, I can imagine we have to be accountable, truthful, compassionate and understanding. So how about all our human shortfalls? Won't they interfere? That's our next statement. What's your stand on this one? Human shortfalls, such as fear, envy, greed, power hunger, they will always interfere with smooth collaboration and co-creation. How do you feel about that? What's your stand in this one? <laughs> Very convinced audience. <laughs> okay, there's some nuance. Some of you think it will interfere with collaboration and co-creation. And I'll just say, no, it won't be a problem. Well, it's a human thing to do things according to our own needs. Oh, some even don't have an opinion. <laughs> Let's form the opinion. Um, it's a human thing to do things according to our needs. When we are aware of our personal needs, we feel an urge that motivates us to take action and fulfill those needs. At the same time, we are social creatures. We're born as the most vulnerable creatures that would not survive if we wouldn't care for each other. So in order to survive, we need to care, we need to interact and collaborate with each other. Honoring these vital needs at all times will benefit us all. And these needs are molded into the core design principles from Eleanor Ostrom. I don't know if you know her. Um, they foster cooperation and collaboration in order to form effective and socially equitable groups. We will all benefit when we use that same urge and energy that we experience when we fulfill our self-serving needs, when it comes to engaging in group needs. Although each person has a very personal desire about how they want to live, and that's no problem, people 
all have a similar need for a stimulating constructive environment in which their potential will increase. And a society is exactly that. It's an economic, social, industrial, cultural infrastructure made by people. It's the objective relation that people have with the material world and with other people. It's obvious, and still we sometimes do seem to forget that we all have a relation with the material world and with each other, as we are the other people. Therefore, the societal change needed in this world will impact all of us and at the same time require us to impact it. As said before, to build effective cooperation, people need to experience a shared identity and purpose. Like we have the purpose in this workshop to progress to a person-to-person -person society. The feeling of belonging to a group and sharing a common purpose drives to connect and collaborate. It's the engine that kickstarts more social cohesion and past cohesion. And in order to group together as a socially equitable group, equitable distribution of the contributions and the benefits is a necessity. It helps balancing interests, individual interests and group interests. And it protects us from being exploited. And it will help us to value efforts and contribution. A natural result of collaboration is the need to make decisions. It's neither choosing for centralized power nor for un endless unproductive discussions. It's about choosing a model that increases engagement and inclusiveness in order to make fair and inclusive decisions. Different models like integrative decision-making or quadratic voting, for example, support this process. Of course, decisions are not the only things that are executed or discussed in a group. It's very helpful to create transparency within groups, to coordinate action and ensure that the collective interests are best served. Peer-based monitoring of agreed behaviors oversees this process and builds trust amongst people. Besides that, it's of course helpful to put in place formal and informal processes to respond to behavior in order to create cooperation and move groups forward towards their shared purpose. It should never be about controlling people. It is about graduated responding to increase helpful and decrease unhelpful behavior. Being able to collaborate requires the development of skills, that's obvious, on a personal, interpersonal, as well as on a group level. And that's why we also focus on fast and fair conflict resolution, to increase your abilities to handle conflicts without letting them interfere with your shared identity and purpose. Accepting that others are able to manage their own affairs without excessive interference from outside requires a certain amount of trust and your willingness to give people an authority to self-govern. Developing your own authority to self-govern helps validating your skills. Giving others authority to self-govern prevents you from invalidating them and keeping them depending on you and it prevents the rise of power structures and inefficient hierarchies. So if people are able to group together as socially, socially equitable groups, and groups are able to act in line with all the seven core design principles that I just explained to you, it will enable people to build collaborative relations with other groups without emotional interference. So knowing that we all have a relation with the material world and with each other, and being aware that the societal change needed in this world will impact us all, and at the same time requires us to impact it, then how will we relate to ownership and possession? The next statement that we would like you to take a stand in is the following. Ownership is a threat to social cohesion and seamless collaboration. What's your stand in this? I would like to invite you again to go to your Mentimeter. You are used to it by now and take a stand in this one. Thus ownership is a threat to social cohesion and seamless collaboration. A lot of you think it is and some disagree. Okay, then how do we deal with that? 
we need to be able to collaborate and we need ways to represent value, which helps us to relate to the material world, as we said before. The urge to fulfill individual and group needs can be used as a spark to strive for the realization of a purpose. But people will always be the engine of change by putting in their efforts, bringing in their energy, their means, their contribution. And they will experience meaning when they receive recognition and are valued for their endeavors. That's why we need to be able to validate participation by allocating a certain value to it. Universal ownership smoothens the way to frictionless collaboration by taking away the burden that fear and greed impose on cooperation when it comes to value. And this helps us to focus on leveraging human talents and skills towards pure co-creation and co-management. When we talked about the framework that replaces institutions, we've told you already a bit about universal ownership, how it is still a representation of value, but no longer gives usage rights. So we disassembled ownership in its two parts, one dealing with value, the other dealing with usage rights or control. Added value is still the increase in value that an initiative creates by undertaking a production process. It is in that sense identical to what we understand by it in the current paradigm. The first difference is that in a quality of life ecosystem, value is always directly held by people. Distribution of value amongst every participant is transparent and once the value is yours, it can only be taken from you if you trade it for something else, money, for example. Another major difference of universal ownership is that value is the only thing people can really possess. Owning a house, for example, means owning the value of the house. It does not give you any usage rights. So you're not controlling the property. You just own the value. Control gives a person or a group the right to steer an asset or a resource. For a property, this means the right to live in it, to build and expand it, or to rent it out. For a business-like initiative, it would mean the right to steer and execute the production process. In that sense, control is a temporary privilege granted to people actively participating in an initiative. Value is always held by people. When you get out of an initiative, you give up control, but not the value you have accumulated over time. Alongside the economic added value we just discussed, there is also the concept of quality of life added value that is measured using the combined impact of an initiative's action on the eight life domains, which you see on the presentation. Initiatives are rewarded for minimizing the gap between the produced economic added value and the produced quality of life added value, either by enhancing their own production or by acquiring it from other initiatives. Every year, both types of value are distributed to participants according to their relative participation in the creation of it. So people end up owning economic and quality of life added value. You can look at this like a savings account and you can easily exchange economic value equal tokens for old world cash as it is a representation of the economic value of the underlying structure. In the same way we explained it for initiatives, an individual's wealth is a combination of the economic and quality of life added value he or she possesses. We imagine that at some point, quality of life value will be exchangeable for tangible goods as well. But what does this mean in practice today? We are in the very early stages of deploying this model, but at this moment, we are onboarding three different initiatives into the ecosystem. First, you have Au Petit Plaisir in France. It's a group of young people running a coffee and cocktail truck initiative and they provide tasty coffee and cocktails to create economic value. To create quality of life added value, they provide jobs and additionally gathering and social interaction, reducing loneliness and isolation in a very remote area in the south of France. 
the second initiative is the Experience Center. It's also in France and it transforms an old bathhouse into a combination of conference facilities as an economic added value and a residential co-living social project generating quality of life added value. And the third initiative is a student home in Belgium, which is a co-housing project in Antwerp, providing affordable qualitative housing in which renting provides the equal and affordable quality, uh, qualitative housing is a quality of life added value. Let's dive a little deeper into the co-housing project, for example. You have three students, Carol, Carlos and Charlie, and they want to go house in Antwerp. They found a suitable house for sale. And the total cost of the property is 350,000 euro. The fair value of, for the right of control was found after a market consultation and set at 1,500 euros each month. They each accept to pay 500 euros monthly rent. The tree joining in their co-housing project is an initiative. Based on the above, their initiative will have a um, 18,000 euro yearly gross turnover. They expect an 11,000 profit from their activity and are planning to commit 4,000 to grow a renovation fund and 7,000 to pay back their investors. This business plan is posted and then a funding campaign is started. Investors all have a different profile based on risk, duration of the payback, and those things. They make an investment offer based on their preference. Like Alice, for example, she's willing to invest 10,000 euros at 1% return, but only if she can expect the investment to be paid back within two years. Bob, on the other hand, does not mind waiting longer, but wants a 2.5% annual return. Based on the above information, the investors are ranked and Alice is at the top at this point. The ranking is done per card and continuously adapted, favoring the most advantageous offers for the initiative. For example, Bob's expected return is based on the fact that he expects to be paid back in four years based on the submitted business plan. Should another bid come in between, prolonging his return time, he expected his expected return would increase, or he could drop off entirely if the required amount is reached, more favorable, favorable offers. When the total committed amount equals or exceeds the requirements, Carol, Carlos and Charlie can lock in the bids up to the required amount. This sets the final order in which each part will be rebought by the initiative. In the beginning, Alice and Bob hold the economic value of the property. Every year, 11,000 of the value is restored to the initiative based on the efforts of Carol, Carlos and Charlie. Since their effort is identical, they all get to hold one third of that value. They are free to hold on to that value or to exchange it for cash on the open market. As you see, we have only scratched the surface of what features this new operating system can unlock on top of our current social societal hardware. And I hope it was just enough to get your, you going and reflect on how universal ownership and the redefinition of value and control can mean to you. For our next exercise, we will put you at work. And to be able to do that, you need to um, log in to another for, um, app in your browser, just type join.groupmap.com and then fill in your invite code mentioned on the screen, 680-508-273 and then put in your email address and you will end up in our group map. Take your time to log in, join.groupmap.com. I take the time to sip a little water. 
<clears throat> okay, I hope everybody was able to log in to group map. Okay. In this exercise, we want to explore how we will actually take actions to progress towards that person-to-person -to -person society. Earlier, oh, I see there's a problem on the chat. The code is 680-508-273. I hear that we have only 10 minutes left for the workshop. So we need to speed up to be able to this, everybody prepped. If I see no signs in the chat, then I assume everyone is prepped to join the group map. In this group map, um, you see two distinctions too. So we can make uh, four quadrants. And earlier in this workshop, we introduced you to the toward and away distinction. That's one key dimension in which we ask you to explore what really matters to you about this workshop and which feelings and thoughts might hook you and keep you from moving towards that matters. And the other key dimension is the distinction between the world of the senses and the world of the mind. Humans are different to other animals because we can use language, which give us the capacity to plan for the future, but also remember the past. And those abilities facilitate the process of learning and enable growth. But we spend so much time and energy thinking that we sometimes fail to notice what is actually happening. For example, think back to the last time that you had a misunderstanding with someone. Chances are that either you or they were not hearing what was actually being said. And instead, focusing on assumptions and beliefs about what was being said. When we combine the distinction between towards and away moves with the distinction between the experience of the mind and the experience of the five senses, we get this matrix, which we're now going to complete together. At the end of this exercise, you will have um, a clearer view on what drives us towards our purpose and that we will see on the bottom right, what we can actually do to make change happen. That's on the top right. That's, um, there is some progress in filling it in. That's great to see people taking action. Um, what might hook us and get in the way of moving towards our purpose, you see at the bottom left, and the pitchfalls we need to avoid, you see on the top left. Okay, so everybody is filling in the matrix together. But I would like you to take an intention in your mind. We are progressing towards that person-to-person -person society. So keep that intention in mind. And ask yourself the question, what really matters to us when it comes to progressing towards a person-to-person -person society? And on the bottom left, we want to see what might hook us from moving towards that person-to-person -person society. The most important is the top right quadrant. What could we be seen doing moving towards that, met that what matters to us, towards that person-to-person -person society? Because we have to make the impact and then we have to take actions. Okay, let me dive into the group map answers. We find it very important, um, the values that we find important, important that matters to us are justice, social and ecological responsibility, connection, love, mutual care. We have to protect nature, solidarity. And I'm so delighted to see that there are many steps already uh, proposed for us to do, like create a digital platform for citizens participating and connecting it to the current societal powers, develop compelling vision of what could be 
different to what it is today. Identify key barriers to change, get involved. We all have to get involved and actively collaborate, engage in change, setting aside time to reflect. Yes, very important. So the key things we decide to focus on, what would that be? Let's vote on that one. That's the next step. You see in your um, app group, that's what we net, it just did. We made a group um, brainstorm of what we could do. We're now going to move towards voting. It's, we're just uh, modeling how you can work with the group to progress towards that um, impact, that individual impact, that group impact. You can find this um, app and use it yourself with your own groups. So now we're going to vote. Okay. I see there's one person engaging to create a digital platform. I don't know if everyone started voting. I don't think I'm able to see it. You can add your vote. If you look at the actions, what could we be seen doing to move forwards to what matters to us? Which actions do you think are important? Okay, so now more people are voting. Okay. Can you explain uh, how we vote? Sorry. You vote by just um, clicking on the right side of the, the line. For example, create a digital platform. On the right side, you see a, a, a circle and you just click on it. Got it. Thank you. No problem. You're, you have five votes to um, put there and to um, give an idea to us about what you think is important to do to progress towards that society, that person-to-person -person society. And I see, for example, most of you think we should active collaborate, actively collaborate. Of course, that's right. We should create a digital platform to find each other and to, for citizens to participate and connect. It's just an example of how you can, as a group, um, brainstorm, vote, decide on what matters to you all, uh, departing from uh, a shared purpose, a shared identity, something that really matters to you as a group. And that's what we wanted to show you. So let's get engaged and do all those things. I need to move on. I get a sign that I have only two minutes left. <laughs> and our workshop, therefore, is running to an end now. We hope at least to have given you some idea of how a person-to-person -person society might look like and how all of us can be part of the change to make that happen starting from today and uh, every day on. But we can also imagine that there are still some questions remaining. Because of lack of time, we would like you to fill in your questions in this next Mentimeter. Um, we will engage to answer those questions after the workshop, and then we will send the answers to you by email. Um, I'm sure we can get your email addresses from uh, the Radical Exchange team, um, and we will make sure you get the answers on your question. So one last time, go to your Mentimeter, um, up and fill in the questions you might still have after this um, after this workshop. Okay, um, I would say don't hesitate to contact us. You can always find us through these contacts uh, that we will show you uh, right now. Voila, that's us, Yuri and Pim. We would like to um, thank you very much for being here, for listening to our proposal, for uh, participating in the polls. And we do hope to see you again and uh, 
see you bringing your energy to impact that necessary change. Take care of all of you and have a beautiful conference for uh, until Sunday evening. Um, I say bye to you. See you next time. <laughs>